2021, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> we thought we were done with Donald Trump, and <laughs> we weren't quite. The first three weeks of 2021, Donald Trump was still president. We had Trump's phone call at the last minute to the Georgia Secretary of State. We had the January 6th insurrection. And then since Biden became president, Trump has continued to go around the country repeating these lies that he actually won the election. And again in Detroit, which is known as the single most corrupt election venue in the country for many years, but nobody went to look at that. There were many more votes than there were voters. And he said it so often and in so many venues that he has managed to convince a sizable portion of Republicans that he was robbed of victory. By now we've had all these audits, all these reviews, the DOJ, there's just been no evidence. And yet Trump keeps his base energized. His supporters are running for office in these key posts in the states. They get to certify elections and they get to run polling places. Trump is not in front of us every day, but the very intense followers that he has, motivated by his false claims about the election, continue to be very active. One of the things we then found ourselves fact-checking a lot was bogus narratives about what actually happened on January 6th where a number of uh, Republicans made statements about January 6th that were proven to be false. Uh, there is some indication that uh, fascist uh, Antifa elements were involved, that they embedded themselves. What happened last week was the, was the result of anarchists who came loaded, prepared, and expired. with weapons. There were groups of agitators that, that were at the tip of the spear that caused that, not, not the tens of thousands of, of Trump supporters who would never even contemplate that. There have been news reports that said Speaker Pelosi vetoed, vetoed bringing the National Guard here. And then the day of the attack, there's been news reports that said she hesitated on calling up the National Guard. Why? Both Jim Jordan and Donald Trump tried to suggest that Nancy Pelosi was somehow at fault for not getting enough security there to prevent the insurrection from taking place in the first place. And, you know, all, by all the available testimony and evidence shows those claims are false. Senator Johnson and many others who are peddling vaccine misinformation, they often point to the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System, or VAERS. We're already over 5,200 deaths uh, reported on the VAERS system. That's the CDC, FDA's early warning system. That, by the way, exceeds the number of deaths reported on the VAERS system for all other vaccines over 31 years. And what they do is they're just hoovering up as many reports as possible. Anyone can submit any report. You know, you get a vaccine. I, ha I had a headache the next day. You know, that is grounds for a report. But is anyone checking that you had a headache or that you got the vaccine? You know, that's what's missing. Senator Johnson uses it as sort of like his evidence that the COVID vaccines were causing mass death. At one point, it was 5,200 deaths that had been reported from people who said, you know, that the death happened after the vaccine was taken. But at the same time, the CDC was saying that they had no link to establish any vaccine as the cause of any death. Now, you know, at the end of 2021, the CDC says there's evidence that six cases of thrombosis, you know, could be linked to the J&J &J vaccine. Much more than half of the population has been vaccinated by this point. And so six deaths uh, to be proven uh, to be linked to one vaccine still makes Senator Johnson's comparison, you know, utterly flawed. One of our Pinocchio's of the year is what we call a Biden original. And sometimes it has to do with a memory of his. I probably spent more time with Xi Jinping, I'm told, than any world leader has because I, I had 24, 25 hours of private meetings with him when I was vice president, traveled 17,000 miles with him. But my point was that when I came back from meeting with him and traveling 17,000 miles with him when I was vice president, he was the vice president. That he claims something happened when you dig deep into it, it turns out it didn't really happen, or if it did, it happened in a much different way than he described it, or it can be a policy issue. When he claimed that there would be no bed, hospital beds left because of an overwhelming number of Alzheimer's patients. You know, if we don't do something about Alzheimer's in America, Every single solitary hospital bed that exists in America, as the nurses can tell you, every single one 
will be occupied in the next 15 years with an Alzheimer's patient. Every one, costing us in excess of a trillion dollars. No one could explain to us where he got that figure. Uh, it was very precise. He said 15 years. Another time he said 20 years. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it, it's an example of, particularly when the president is not reading from a script, how he can uh, create his own reality.